What's up, guys? How are you guys doing today? I just wanted to make a short video on the gear I'm using on my uh, on my Feral Hybrid uh, Druid uh, for PvP. I've been having a lot of people coming into the stream uh, asking me what gear they should use and what gear I'm using. Uh, so I wanted to give you guys uh, an idea of what I try to think about when I'm putting a set together and what gear I'm actually using. Uh, so the main thing I want to focus on here is you want to remember to... As a druid, you want as much stats as you possibly can get. You want a even distribution of stats. Now, because there's not any amazing druid gear in the game or easily accessible yet, unless you have access to the PvP gear, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get. So you, what you want to do is get an even distribution of stats with a priority on stamina in, and intellect. Stamina obviously keeps you alive, and intellect gives you mana to heal yourself and shapeshift, which is going to in turn keep you alive. Um, so the main consensus is just wearing your full T1 and T2 pieces is kind of the way to go. Uh, but I want to go over the pieces I have here and uh, go over my two builds, my flag carrying build and the my more of a uh, skirmishing like like DPS I would say kind of build when I'm trying to actually like you know when I want to do damage and one v one and stuff. So start off with T uh, two helmet obviously T two helmet is awesome. If I had a T one I would sit, I would think about using T one as well. T one or T two helmet obviously is the way to go. Uh, the tier two helmet is uh, really good, but the tier one helmet actually gives spell damage which, in my opinion, I would actually probably prefer for PvP. So I would probably say T1 Helmet if you have it. Otherwise, I would go with Tier 2. Um, for my neck, I like using the Escander's Collar. Now, if you haven't gotten this, it's fine. I just like it because it's a lot of stamina and a little bit of crit chance. The dodge is nice, but the crit chance and stamina is really nice because that synergizes well with uh, you know staying alive and also Blood Frenzy. Uh, so usually I'll switch between Escander's Collar and my Tooth of Nar. Uh, then obviously T1 Shoulders, uh, Hide of the Wild. If you don't have the money to buy Hide of the Wild, I would highly recommend trying to get it. Uh, but until then, you could use something like a Sergeant's Cloak uh, or maybe a Spirits Caster's uh, Cape. Uh, but I would probably go with either the Sergeant's Cloak or the Heart of the Wild. The Sergeant's Cloak is nice because you have a, a ton of extra stamina on it and a lot of base armor, uh, which obviously benefits Druids a lot because all of that stuff is multiplicative because of our bear form. Uh, so Sergeant's Cloak, or but preferably Heart of the Wild, that extra bonus healing is massive. 42 off one piece is huge and cannot be overstated. Uh, so yeah, I use the Heart of the Wild. Now, I use a Warbear Harness because I don't have access to my T1 chest piece. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist in the loot tables for me because <laughs> I've been raiding MC since like the second or third week of Classic and I still have not seen it yet. It hasn't even dropped, but uh, what I do to replace it is I use a Warbear, uh, a Warbear Harness. Now, I know I'm not getting the intellect I would usually get for my T1, because obviously that's the more uh, the more optimal uh, piece to use. But the bonus strength is nice because I am playing Feral Hybrid. Uh, and obviously a ton of stamina is super important because staying alive is the name of the game. You know what I mean? Uh, then pretty simple, Scenario Embracers. I have a plus seven intellect enchant. I'm personally, uh, I personally enjoy having a little bit more intellect on a lot of pieces. And it also makes sense because I'm using a Warbear Harness. So I'm not getting in tier. So, you know, seven intellect on the wrist is not massive, but it does help supplement uh, the intent missing there, and also synergizes well with uh, Heart of the Wild, right? Uh, gloves, scenario and glo uh, just regular scenario and gloves. I don't have it because I've been kind of lazy, but I would also get a mount speed enchant on my gloves. Uh, scenario and belt is, is really, really nice. I have a Sash of Mercy as well, uh, but I usually will use the scenario and belt because the extra intellect is massive, uh, and although it has much less healing done, that is nine uh, damage healing, right? So your moon fires will get affected by that as well, and your damage spells. So that I kind of am a fan of that. Uh, but mainly the intellect. The intellect is is so huge on it. I would not want to trade away twenty two intellect, uh, you know, for the for the bonus healing. Uh, for pants, I'm using salamander scale pants. Um, if you have access to your tier one or tier two pants, I would use those over them for sure. I personally feel like they're better. Uh, this has bonus spell crit. You're getting a little bit more stats uh, and less bonus healing, but I feel like the spell crit and uh, extra stats are, are worth it. Uh, same with the tier two. If I access to your tier two pants, uh, tier two pants are definitely more worth it. Way more intellect. I would probably, the tier list for it would probably go tier two pants, tier one pants, and then salamander scale or whatever else. You know what I mean? Uh, but the tier two is really nice just because you get a ton of intellect, good amount of stamina, and a good amount of uh, spell healing. You know what I mean? Uh, boots, I'm using Scenarian Boots with a minor movement speed increase. Obviously, I think everyone should be using that. Uh, and this is where things get a little bit different. So I'm using a Don Julio's Band. I just unlocked it recently when I was doing my uh, Exalted for AV. Um, I personally like it because it's it's a good amount of stamina. You're getting that 1% crit chance, a 1% hit chance, and a little bit of attack power. Um, because I don't have, have access to my PvP gear yet, I feel like ha trying to get, you know, getting that little bit of crit, a little bit of attack power in other places isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I have been enjoying it a lot. I still am testing it out. 
Um, but it has been working out pretty good for me. I have been enjoying it a lot. Um, obviously, if you have access to your PvP gear, your PvP gear will take over, is is better than anything I'm wearing. If you have access to PvP gear, you wear your PvP gear. It The bonuses on it are phenomenal. You're getting stats in every single category. You're getting a good amount of armor in every category. Um, and you're getting spell damage and spell healing. Like the, the PvP gear is obviously the set to wear if you have access to it. You know what I mean? Uh, and obviously the set bonuses are phenomenal. The increased movement speed in um, cat, bear, and travel form cannot be, you know, <laughs> cannot be overstated how good it is to move as a druid. You know what I mean? Uh, my other ring, I'm using a forging seal. Uh, the bonus healing is important when you're trying to uh, do anything because everyone knows, if for anyone who's played druid, you understand that it's a battle of attrition. You're trying to... Uh, outlast your opponents. You, we don't do big burst damage. We just have the benefit of doing everything, and the one of those things is st keeping ourselves alive. So, forging seal, intellect stab, bonus healing. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, before I got my Don Julio's, I was actually using a uh, Blood of the Martyr. The Blood of the Martyr is just a ton of intellect, a ton of stamina, pure stats. I f I loved it. Uh, but I have been experimenting with Don Julio's band, and I have been enjoying the Don Julio's band a lot for the uh, Feral Resto Hybrid spec. And then for trinkets, obviously, you want to use your Insignia of the Horde and whatever other trinkets you have. Uh, Burrow of Peasant Callers, uh, if you have Dragonlings, uh, the, any of the engineering trinkets. Like, trinkets are just kind of more, like, it's not class-specific. You want to just use your trinkets uh, for uh, whatever the case may, may call for. Now, for weapons, I started using the Unstoppable Force uh, because I recently got a with AV. I kind of do like the stats on it. The 19 Strength, 15 Stam, and the extra crit chance is really nice, in my opinion. Um, I switched between the Unstoppable Force and the Glowing Brightwood Staff uh, for two-handers. Um, right now, I have been sticking with the Unstoppable Force. I feel like doing that a little bit of extra damage, having a little bit of extra crit, we obviously don't get the chance on hit effect because we're druids, um, but I do enjoy it for 1v1 skirmishes. I feel like it's very powerful, uh, and I find it works It works really well. Uh, if you don't have that, the Glowing Brightwood Staff should be relatively cheap on your server. It's not that sought after. Uh, but it is really good for druids because if you don't have your finkles, which is another good PvP weapon, I'll pull up here. If you don't have access to your uh, finkles off Major Domo, which is just pure stats, which is you know twenty four intellect, twenty five stam. That you can't again intellect to stam is 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 bay. Um, the glowing brightwood staff is a very good supplement for it. It is a ton of intellect, a ton of stamina. It's a very good weapon in my opinion. I like using it a lot. Now another combination I'll use is the uh, cold forged hammer with the uh, Ancient Cornerstone Grimoire. Now, the Cold Forged Hammer is the hammer you get from the... It's a one-handed hammer mace you get from the Win-1 Alterac Valley match, I believe, or something like that. Uh, it's pretty good for Druids, just getting Intellect Stamina. Can't go wrong with that, a little bit of MP5. And the Ancient Cornerstone Grimoire. Uh, if you don't have access to this, it's fine. Eventually, you will get it, I'm sure, from doing Anixia all the time. Uh, people never stop running Anixia, so eventually you will see it. Uh, summons a Skeleton. That kicks ass, and then you have your, uh, you know, just raw, good raw stats. Uh, you could also use, depending on your one-handers, if you have Orstone Hammer, that is also fantastic. I would highly recommend using an Orstone Hammer. Uh, maybe a Sorcerer's Dagger, or um, I guess that's pretty much it for, like, decent one-handers. Uh, or maybe the Hammer out of BRD, but, uh, you know, maybe not, because you're not getting a lot of stats out there. You're just getting a lot of healing done, but that, it, I guess it depends. Uh, but you could also use a Lay of the Life Giver if you're if you feel like you're going to be, you, you're lacking on a little bit of healing done and you need some more healing done, or even a Therizine's Touch. Uh, if you want to do your moon fires and you're supposed to do a little bit more damage, uh, and as well as helping your healing, that also is another good alternative. But mainly recently, I've been using the uh, the unstoppable force a lot, and I've been really, really liking it for this build. Now, the next build that was my uh, more of a DPS skirmishing build. Uh, the next build we're going to go over is my flag carrying build. So we're going to go over to, to just the pieces that changed. Uh, mainly the same thing, except I'm using a guiding staff of wisdom. This is my PV healing staff. It does, it's just you know an extra bonus, like uh, a little over hundred, like a, you know. This is like plus 100 healing done. Uh, when you're trying to carry the flag, having the extra healing done is actually really, really important uh, because you're trying to not die. You want, you know, those extra ticks off your rejuve are massive. Uh, getting extra health from your regrowths are massive. You don't have a lot of opportunity to heal when you're under pressure and you're trying to run the flag. So getting that extra bit of healing on the move is massive, right? Getting that, uh, uh, that bigger NS healing touch is huge. Uh, so I would say use it would be uh, Guiding Staff of Wisdom. You could use the hammer out of uh, BRD. I'll pull up right here. Uh, where is it? Blackrock Depths. And then it is... Chest of the Seven. Where are we? Here we go. Chest of the Seven. 
You could use the Hammer of Grace, obviously, all with a plus 55 healing enchant. Uh, or you could use a Oral Stone Hammer with, um, you know, always with Lay of the Lifegiver. If you're using, if you're using a one-hander, you always want to have Lay of the Lifegiver in the offhand because, again, healing done is king when it comes to flag carrying. Uh, but what I would actually suggest, personally, I don't have it myself because I've been kind of lazy with getting it. Uh, but I would, I personally would probably run a Time Worn Mace with a plus 55 healing enchant uh, with my Lay of the Lifegiver. It would probably be my, like, meta flag carrying uh, weapon, to be honest. Uh, because Time Worn Staff gives you that bonus armor, because we are druids, our bear form, that 120 armor becomes multiplicative with, with when we're in bear form, and it is massive and super helpful. And obviously, extra stamina, you can never say no to, like, extra stats. And because it is a one-hander, we do get access to Lay of the Life Giver. So we're still getting that one plus 100 healing done, uh, but we're getting that bonus armor, which is massive. So if you do have access to it, I would highly recommend a Time Worn Staff with a plus 55 healing enchant. As far as rings, everything's pretty much the same for drink seal, and this time I am using my Blood of the Martyr, uh, because the extra intellect and stamina is much more important to me than, uh, you know, getting crit chance and hit chance or whatever. It's, it's more important to stay alive, you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, the idea you want to, or that I have when I'm trying to get my gear again, like I said, is that you may not have the exact pieces I have, but you want to just have a good spread of all your stats uh, with, a, with a primary focus on uh, stamina and intellect. And, uh, and because you are a druid, you're going to be changing your gear often in a battleground, whether it's Warsong Gulch or AV. Uh, I will be switching sets often. I'll, you know, if I feel like I have to heal, if I'm not flag carrying and I feel like I have to heal the flag carrier, I will like, you know, stay in a, in a set that has more healing done because I'm going to play the role of a healer. If I feel like the, the flag carrier has, has enough heals and he needs more damage support, I'm going to put on, you know, my Feral DPS set and I'm going to start to do a little bit more damage and try to support, uh, through killing the enemy and, you know, putting pressure on them. Um... Or if I'm flag carrying, if I need to flag carry, then, you know, I'm going to switch before I pick up the flag or as I pick it up, I'm going to switch into my flag carrying set and, and get going. It's a lot of, uh, you know, just being quick with it, kind of getting acclimated to what you need to do. And once you do it enough, you're going to start to know when you want to be wearing which pieces of armor and which sets. And using a, an add-on like item rack where you can save your sets and then just call upon them whenever you'd like is a game changer. And in my opinion, is a absolute necessity uh, for playing uh, Druid in PvP Battlegrounds. Uh, but yeah, guys, I guess that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to the video if this was helpful and you enjoyed it. Also down below, I'm going to be putting a link to my uh, Twitch stream. I stream on Twitch uh, five days a week, uh, pretty much every morning, uh, starting at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys ever want to tune in, uh, come hang out, have any questions, uh, make sure to tune in. Make sure to hang come hang out. So I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching. Peace.